while I'm tempted to talk about the highlight of shifting from Procter & Gamble to ANZ, which is move to a new country, a new industry, and a new company, I would probably step back and say the career highlight for me was when I shifted from my analytics role, 10 years in analytics, um, in a functional at that time called Customer and Market Knowledge in Procter & Gamble, where you're focusing, you act like an internal consultant, you help the businesses figure out short-term, long-term strategy, as well as insights in the brands to move to marketing itself. That was absolutely the highlight. The reason it was a highlight was because it helped me just grow and stretch as an individual. It helped me grow and stretch as a leader, and it just made me a much more well-rounded business person. But personally, for me, I needed courage. I needed to be extremely humble, uh, realizing I'm walking into things that I don't understand. And I needed to be shameless about asking questions around, you know, requesting others to teach me and, and not, not kind of shy away at the senior level when you make those transitions. As a marketing team, we focused on three broad areas for the bank. First is how do I drive reputation for ANZ? How do I accelerate revenue growth? And how do I deepen the relationships with the customers? And the measures and what we celebrate success for um, is very much linked to that. So for reputation, uh, the measures are really around brand consideration, equity growth, and how our interactive NPS is going up, because frankly, that's a big driver of uh, reputation. From a revenue standpoint, it is really around how do I drive acquisition? How, how am I measuring cost per acquisition, improving uh, returns and in marketing investments? And then from a relationship standpoint, it's really the classical, how do you drive depth, breadth of the customer relationship? How do I drive longevity? And something which is unique to us, how do I focus on improving financial well-being of our customers? Is, uh, you know, of course, at every divisional level, so you have the celebrations for the work that is happening. But then on a quarterly level across the entire enterprise, we get together where we've got basically three key behaviors that we want to drive, which are driving our innovation, driving our um, you know, commerciality, driving the creativity that we're driving, and we celebrate the best work for that happening over there. And beyond that, of course, get together and have fun, you know, uh, it's always nice. So we're always looking for opportunities to do that in so many different ways. There's one trend or innovation that I'm exploring is really around how generative, generative AI could help us do our, our job better. What do I mean by that? Uh, frankly, all of us have got more ideas that we can execute, uh, more ways in which we as a team could be delivering value for our customers or for our business partners or our shareholders. And I am... I'm, I'm really looking at how could generative AI help us drive scale and speed in things from ranging from media and media planning to, you know, content to our my engineering teams and, you know, the codes we write or, for example, even a lot of documentation of that code. How could we use the technology for that in a way which is safe and secure? So I think the 11 consecutive rate rises have really made our teams, and frankly, not just the marketing teams, but the entire bank refocus on the consumer from every possible lens. And we are very, very fortunate that we are sitting on a lot of data about our customers and our customer behaviors ourselves directly. And therefore, I would say there are three things that we are trying to do. The first one is absolutely try and walk into the shoes of our customers. So so that one, that number one of walking to the shoes of the customers will help us really just anticipate the changes ahead and be on trend as things change. The second one is, is better leverage the full breadth of our portfolio of products for the needs of different segments, because just like COVID hit different segments differently, we are seeing these 11 right, um, rounds of rate increases affect different customers differently, and we need to be able to figure out what's best for each one of them. And then third one really is how do we convert that understanding 
and our entire portfolio into stronger campaigns and stronger plans. You know, knowing that so many people are really thinking about should should they stay or should they leave uh, or find a new um, home for their home loans. And New Zealand team has created this beautiful campaign, which just captures that exactly with the classical song, should we stay or should we go?